Everybody, this is Tracy here with another edition of a view from Tracy's point and we are here to talk about Dr. Bill Cosby I think it was about a week or so ago I had pointed out the fact that all of his social media has either been taken down or is no longer active like I believe his Instagram is still there but there's no post being made to it the Twitter account I know is deleted and so you guys may have heard about this documentary that um, recently came out with this guy, Camus Bell, uh, who is definitely a sellout, needs to go somewhere and sit down. And he did this documentary on Showtime, which is called We Need to Talk About Cosby. And so far, I haven't really heard anybody giving it any rave reviews. You know, people were talking about the fact that they're sick of documentaries about people where the people aren't on the documentary. And if Dr. Cosby can't defend himself, then they don't want to be bothered with the documentary. And then on the other side, you have the Me Too trolls who come in and swear that everything is actual and factual. And so Mr. Cosby is being sued once again by this lady named Judy Huff and she is trying to force him into a deposition to participate in the deposition and so there was a hearing where jennifer bonjean who is his lawyer and the woman who successfully had his conviction in the constead case overturned andrea constead case overturned and now she's also representing him in this case she does not want him to be deposed and she is asking that the judge allow him to plead the fifth, you know, and not incriminate himself. And she also went on to say that Mr. Cosby is fearful that they are going to try and do to him what they did to um, Mr. Robert Kelly. And that is come with a RICO act, you know, a racketeering act, because these people are so desperate. Like, I don't understand what the point of any of this is but they are just desperate to bring these people down and it really makes no sense. And so this is an article from Rolling Stone that says, um, Bill Cosby fears federal prosecutors might decide to pursue a racketeering and sex trafficking case against him similar to the one that recently succeeded against R&B singer R. Kelly in New York and his criminal defense lawyer revealed in a California courtroom on Friday, which was today, so Cosby's lawyer, Jennifer Bonjean, spoke by phone at a hearing on Cosby's request to invoke his Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination and sidestep a follow-up deposition in his civil court battle with accuser Judy Huff. Bonjean claimed that Kelly's convention conviction last September and other factors, including W. Camus, Bell's new Showtime docuseries, We Need to Talk About Cosby, show her client is not out of criminal jeopardy. She said the docuseries was whipping the public into a frenzy and with the backdrop of the ongoing Me Too movement, Cosby fears of future um, prosecution is not fanciful, it's not imaginary. Bungin argued that Huff, the accuser now suing Cosby with claims that he assaulted her at the Playboy Mansion in 1974 when she was 15 and he was 37, already deposed Cosby once before and now wants to ask sweeping follow-up questions along the lines of, have you ever assaulted anyone anywhere at any time in the last 84 years of your life? And then stick a short pin here, you know, with that whole Playboy Mansion crap that's coming to life. And now you have all these women you know, saying that they were assaulted at the Playboy Mansion, you know, when they were underage and all of this other bull crap. And I'm like, why you didn't bring that energy when Hugh Hefner was alive? Like why we didn't have Hugh Hefner going through all this crap 
that black men are going through. You know, so why were you even at the Playboy Mansion? What were you looking for at the Playboy Mansion? How did you get into the Playboy Mansion? And what I do find interesting about the Playboy um, situation that's arising for we don't know why because Hugh Hefner is going on to glory so why he's talking about it now but there are a whole bunch of women that have come forward to say basically that they never witnessed any of this stuff that these women are talking about and they were there to defend Hugh Hefner and I was thinking wow what would that have been like if all the people in the Kelly, you know, that R. Kelly has helped and supported band together and did the same thing and show support for him when the Surviving Lives documentary came out. And then also I wanted to talk to you guys, but I got busy and didn't do the video about Kelly Price. And you all know that John Jalen Savage had the audacity to come for Kelly Price because of some comments that Kelly Price made on um, the Vlad, you know, the guy, the informant guy, um, Vlad TV, where she was interviewed by the comedian Lunell. And she was basically saying that she didn't see any of this stuff that uh, Mr. Kelly was accused of, that, you know, they had like a brother sister relationship. And had she had seen or known any of these things, like she would have stepped up and said something. And so John Jalen Savage had the nerve to come out and come for her and say that, you know, basically the parents aren't to blame for what happened and why is she defending Mr. Kelly. And so everybody was like, oh, yeah, get her, Kelly, get her. You know, you don't come for uh, Kelly Price like that. You know, she's from the hood. She will get with you. But what people weren't talking about is the fact that prior to the video where Kelly Price read John Jalen Savage, she was celebrating um, that week that all of that happened, which was like a week or two ago, was the 30 year anniversary of her being discovered and going on tour with Mariah Carey. So she was basically giving her history of how, you know, her career got started. And she went all the way through to when she did a friend of mine. And she was saying how a friend of mine was on the album and the album was doing good, but they never did a video for a friend of mine because they didn't feel that a full figure dark skinned woman would be received well in a music video back then. So when they did the, so they let the song come out. The song did very, very well. So then they decided to do the remix, which is the one that was um, included. I believe R. Kelly helped write and produce the remix of it. But anyway, we know he was in the video and they did the whole Mr. Big thing. So she told the entire story, guys. And not one time did she mention Robert Sylvester Kelly's name as having been a producer, a co-writer, the video in the video, responsible for the success of the video, totally whitewashed him from the whole story of how she became the Kelly Price that we know today, how she got to be where she is today. And all I could think was, so she's getting ready to go on tour and I know she's going on tour with Ron Isley and she's going on tour with another group. So I'm thinking, okay, these people then pulled her coattail, pulled her to the side and told her no more talk about R. Kelly. We don't talk about R. Kelly. Okay. Um, don't mention him. So as she was telling the story and, you know, erasing him from her legacy, she kept saying, I want to thank everybody everybody like there are people that I didn't name that I didn't mention you know but you're just as important and you know I remember you I appreciate you but she would not say the name Robert Sylvester Kelly out of his mouth so I didn't know if you guys peeped that but I did want to bring that to your attention since I didn't get an opportunity to do the video when I wanted to do it last week or whenever that story broke so now back to this whole um, saga with Dr. Cosby. So it says Los Angeles County Superior Court Judge Craig Carlin listened patiently throughout the hour long hearing and declined to rule from the bench, but said he was leaning towards allowing Cosby to plead the fifth. Um, he promised a written ruling soon 
and he was quoted as saying i don't see the assertion as frivolous here especially given what happened in the commonwealth of pennsylvania and then he went on to add that beyond possible racketeering charges, Cosby also faces the possibility that state prosecutors might reverse course and bring charges in the criminal investigation involving accusers whose allegations are not barred by statute of limitations. And he says, is there a reasonable fear of prosecution based on providing the information sought? The answer is he does have a reasonable fear that he could be incriminating himself if in fact he provides the information that the statute of limitations have not run. I don't see it as that close a call. And then Huff first sued Cosby, and this is a little bit of history on Huff bullshit. Okay, Huff first sued Cosby in 2014, but her complaint was put on hold by Cosby's two prior criminal trials in Pennsylvania related to accuser Andrea Constant and the ongoing COVID pandemic. The case got back on track last year after Pennsylvania's highest court overturned Cosby's conviction for assaulting Constant in 2004, and he walked out of prison a free man. Now, keep in mind, Dr. Cosby is 84 years old. He's partially blind. Why can't these people let it go? Like some of these heifers then died and went on to the grave with this BS. It's like, let it go and get on. Like, this lady is too, too, mm, they're going to make me cuss, okay? <laughs> but just too old for this nonsense and these games that they are playing. And I just really do not understand the point of all of it. Because why was her 15-year-old ASS at the Playboy Mansion in the first place? Why was she even there? How did she get in? Why are you not suing the Playboy Mansion why didn't you sue Hugh Heffner while he was still alive for this BS that you're claiming? But I digress. Okay, so let's move on. So in its stunning decision, the court said Cosby's right to due process was violated because Montgomery County prosecutors had promised they wouldn't bring charges back in 2005. And relying on that promise, Cosby gave a civil deposition testimony related to Constant that was used against him at his criminal trial a decade later. And then we also know that the prosecutor who brought the charges against Mr. Cosby he only used this, he used it as a political campaign promise to get his butt elected or re-elected. I can't remember if he was up for re-election or if it was his first round. He may have been up for re-election, but I know it was politically motivated him uh, bringing these charges. Let's see. So it says, what else did this article... Okay, so Bonjean brought up Kelly's recent conviction as she argued Friday that federal prosecutors have been very aggressive about bringing claims against celebrities under a series of RICO violations, pleading around the statutes of limitations and charging people with predicate acts that date back decades. Um, the Racketeer Influence and Corruption Organization Act, known as RICO, is more typically used in business corruption and mob cases. And then she went on to add that I also represent Mr. Kelly, who most certainly was prosecuted under a RICO theory in which he was a celebrity. And the theory went that there was an inner circle of people who worked for celebrities and helped them get sex. We know that federal prosecutors are creatively using federal statutes to prosecute individuals with allegations that go back a very, very, very long time. Um, Huff's lawyer, John West, argued Friday that Cosby shouldn't automatically get a lifetime pass with the Fifth Amendment on the theory that prosecutors might suddenly spring criminal charges on him for cases that are decades old. Either way, Judge Carlin said the Huff case is moving ahead. He set a new trial date of May 5th, giving both sides an extra month to prepare and agreed to take up another dispute in the case later this month related to Cosby's, Cosby's request for an independent medical examination of Huff. Um, she is fighting that request. Of course she is, because they want to be able to just go in the courtroom and say whatever they want to say. 
Huff first sued Cosby in December 2014, claiming the comedian approached her and a 16-year-old friend as they watched him working on a film set in 1974. Huff says Cosby gave her alcohol at a follow-up meeting a few days later as part of a game he proposed and then took her to the Playboy Mansion. Girl, anyway, he then gave you some alcohol somewhere else and then took you to the Playboy Mansion. Okay. So according to Huff, Cosby led her to a bedroom inside the home of magazine mogul Hugh Hefner and tried to kiss her on the mouth as he slid his hand down her pants and used her hand to perform acts on him. After filing the complaint for battery and intentional infliction of emotional distress, Huff visited the LAPD Special Victims Unit with lawyer none other Whew, I be wanting to say stuff about this woman, but you know what, Lord Jesus. Mm, okay, just snatch it out my mouth. Lawyer Gloria Allred and filed a report. No criminal charges in the case were ever filed. Cosby 84 vehemently denies Huff's claims, according to his publicist, Andrew Wyatt. Um, Huff's suit isn't the only civil case still pending against the disgrace. Oh, we're not saying disgrace, um, pending against Dr. Cosby, who is a former TV star of the hit show, The Cosby Show. Um, he was sued by actress and visual artist Lily Bernard, who is, um, yeah, she's kind of slow, in federal court in New Jersey last October. Bernard claims Cosby drugged and awed her at the Trump Taj Mahal Casino Resort in Atlantic City in or around August 1990 after she met him on the set of The Cosby Show and he offered to help advance her career. Cosby was ordered to respond to her complaint by Friday. So all I got to say is there has got to be a special place in hell for these people. <laughs> like these women, like, oh my God. Anyway. There needs to be a me too hell. Yeah, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, I'm just letting you guys know that these people are crazy and they just will not let it go because I'm telling you something. There is no way I am going to be 70. How old did I say that lady was? 74? She's too damn old for this. I know this much. But there's just no way I am. You no, know, it happened in 1974. So that was. Okay, y'all help me do the math. 1974, so it's been 26 plus 22. What's that? 48 years ago? Yeah, something like 47, 48 years ago. And she was 15 at the time, so that would make her, let's see, 47, 57. So she's like, what, 62, 63? Girl, you got more days behind you than you have ahead of you. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. So anyway, that's it for me. Just want to um, bring this update to y'all because I'm sick of these people. I'm so sick of them. I'm so sick of them. Anyway, go ahead. Leave your comments below. Rate the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And until the next time, I shall talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.